welcome to the Afterwards program where we discuss the weekly sermon presented by Pan the Pan African Orthodox Christian Church's Vila Kuta, which is Church Without Walls. I'm Baba Kafense Chike, your host, and I'm joined by Cardinal Swad Walker, this week's preacher, as we discuss this week's sermon, The Fire This Time. Welcome to the Afterwards program today, Cardinal Swad. Please tell our viewers, I hope all is well with you. Please tell our viewers that you're ins the inspiration for the title and topic of this week's sermon and the scripture you selected. So the inspiration, of course, this being the, the season of Pentecost and fire um, representing uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit, uh, which the whole season of Pentecost is all about, all about the group seeking that, that Kugasana explosion uh, that that's where it came from. Plus, um, you know, just reflecting on um, Pastor and Bayou did a really, really powerful uh, Bible class years back at our Black Madonna 50 celebration where he broke down how the Dagara people of um, Burkina Faso, West Africa, um, how they viewed the the element of fire and how that played a part in their cosmology and that just kind of stuck with me and I wanted to kind of fuse that together. Well, could you maybe say a little more about Pentecost because uh, I think in the, it, it seems like in the typical or the more traditional black church, if you will, there seems to be so much emphasis on Easter and so little emphasis on Pentecost, and I have to actually say for myself, I had no idea of what Pentecost was until I joined the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church, and it's important. So could you maybe share with our viewers what the the power, the importance of Pentecost? Well, that's because, you know, we've been, we've been taught, at least in this Babylon, that, um, how, how am I trying to say this? The, the, the process of religion, which is really the whole thing, has been extracted from our faith system. And so the Lenten Easter season just becomes one day Easter. We don't we don't focus on the Lenten season, which is a whole process of trying to go through that introspection and get your spiritual house clean so that you can experience a resurrection during Easter. Uh, Christmas is or excuse me, the Advent Christmas season has been reduced to just Christmas and presents and materialism or whatever. But Advent is a whole season of preparation where we are trying to prepare a way for the Lord, prepare a way for, you know, Christ consciousness to be born in us. And so it only makes sense that Pentecost, a season which doesn't have you know, a particular big name holiday attached to it would get lost in the sauce. Pentecost is a season just like Advent, just like Lent, but a season where we focus on our collective, the unity. You know, we can do more together than we can apart. I need you, you need me, we need each other. The season of Pentecost is all about the power of the group, all about the fact that there was the Black Messiah, Jesus, but then when the church was born through the Pentecostal experience, there was, in the words of um, the Honorable Jeremoji Abebe Ajman, founder of the Shrines of the Black Madonna, um, it moved from being one a Messiah, Jesus, to a community of Jesus, where the community had the power. Literally earlier today, I was um, at U of H talking about this with my class and, you know, reminded them that in the three-year ministry of Jesus, uh, researchers say that he was able to muster roughly 120 followers. Well, after that group, that community of Jesus um, experienced the rush of a mighty wind and the tongues of fire resting above each head. In one day, with their powerful testimony and preaching, 5,000 joined. And the next day, 3,000 joined. So in two days, they had exponentially increased the community that the Black Messiah Jesus was trying to build, you know, when he was alive. And so the season of Pentecost is, it, it's it's really absolutely perfect for what Black folk need right now. 
uh, something to bring us together, to pull us together so we can not only um, recognize our collective power, but then put it to use. So as I listen to what you just said, it makes me think that we know in the traditional church, the focus is on the resurrection of the Christ. And it seems like that resurrection was almost an impetus for the res resurrection of the faith of the disciples. Is that a reasonable? Yeah, I mean, you can you can definitely make that connection because um, according to scripture, the risen Christ told the disciples, stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. So they had a group, they had a, a, a collective, um, they had a movement that scattered and broke up after Jesus was killed, assassinated, murdered. Um, and so for all intents and purposes, that movement was dead, but it was resurrected at Pentecost after those disciples gathered together in the upper room and they prayed and they confessed and they forgave and they cried and they went over all that Jesus had taught them that they didn't understand while he was with them. But through this process, you know, th those walls that had separated them started tumbling down and they opened themselves to an experience. And the, the Bible explains it as a rush of a mighty wind, those tongues of fire resting above each head. But it was absolutely a resurrection, but not just a resurrection of a person, like you said, rather a resurrection of a group, a resurrection of a community, a resurrection of a movement. And that's why I say that um, we need the fire this time. I, did, I have to concur with you on that. Um, could you say, you mentioned the Zealots, the Essenes, the Sakari. And in, in your reference to them, you also talk about the point or you make the point that only the lit or you equate lit with being woke responded mm -hmm. to the call of Jesus. Could you say a little bit about who those people were and also tell us about the importance of us staying in touch with our fire and how the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church facilitates us retaining and fueling our fire so that it can continue to prepare us for these struggles. Well, when I, when I was uh, um, thinking about the Essenes and the Zealots and the Nazarenes and the poor and the Sakari, et cetera, et cetera, I started thinking a lot about our own church, how so many of our members walk down the aisle or were open to um, the call of God through the shrines of the Black Madonna. Um, many of us had been in our own organizations, doing our own things, seeking to uh, make life better for for Black people. And that was really what the, what the disciples were. Um, I mean, according to the historians, some of them were, were those Sakari, the dagger men, some were Zealots, some were Essenes, some were uh, Pharisees. Um, but one of the reasons why that's important is because you can you can read scripture and walk away thinking that the disciples were just a whole bunch of bumbling, do nothing idiots, so to speak. But that is not who they were. Um, however, uh, another point which I think is kind of important is, you know, all of us as human beings, we can be jamming one minute and not jamming the next. And that's, that's how I see the disciples, but that's how I see all of us. We, we all have those highs and we have those lows. The fire this time is, is, is a reminder that um, no matter how low we've fallen, we can have that fire, that power, that um, influence or power to influence rekindled. So we don't have to stay in those valleys. We can be resurrected in our spirit, our energy, our impact and all those things. The comments you just made made me think about the protracted nature of this struggle that we're involved in. Of course, many of us, when we started this, we didn't have all this discoloration in our hair. And to continue to be involved, you have to find a way to contextualize things that keep you continuously working towards uh, these type of maybe seemingly lofty goals. Uh, in your closing, you assert that it ain't over till it's over. Could you please elaborate a little bit on what you mean by that? 
Well, our, our presiding bishop, Jeremoji Menelik Kimathi, is fond of reminding us that there is no age limit to serving God, that um, in the African tradition, um, everyone has a role, everyone plays a part. And so this idea that you age out of service to God is, is not an African idea. Um, elders have a place. Um, all of us, from, from the youngest to the oldest, we all have a place. And so it ain't over till it's over um, in terms of, you know, age and, and getting older. And, and I like the way you said the discoloration that we begin to that we begin to experience. But not only that, it ain't over till it's over. Like I was saying earlier, um, you know, because we, we all, you know, fall victim to this. We're, we're looking back on, oh, man, we were jamming back in the day. We did this, that and the other. And we can fall in love with what we did back then. Uh, Bishop Juwanza was recently talking about that whole kind of focus on either the past or the future just a few days ago, I think, at, at our orientation. Um, but there is so much that we can do right here, right now, wherever that now is, as, as a 20-something, as a as a, a, a 50, 60-something, as an 80-year-old or, or older we all have the potential to allow God to do great things with us, through us, in us, and around us, wherever our now is. Because that's because now that's where God is. So retirement is not an option. A ain't an option, man. <laughs> can't, you can't retire, brother. You know, I have friends and colleagues that don't uh, that I don't think understand. Uh, and, and I'm I'm not saying it's just for myself. That the work we do is is not a job. Or a career but anyhow we're out of time and as we come to a close i like to ask if there's something i may have overlooked that you would leave our audience with and even if not if there's some closing comments you might to leave, may like to leave uh, our, the viewing audience uh j just that um wherever you find yourself if you find yourself in a rut if you see yourself going through the motions what have you you can break out of that. Um, if you have been beating yourself up because you haven't done this, that, or the other, you don't have to stay in that place. There is power and resurrection for you, for me, and really for us, especially when we bring all that together and we do the crying and the fellowship and then the forgiving and all and, and, and the praying and the praising and all those things. And that power can come to us and Lord have mercy, if any people need that power right now, it's Black folk. We need the fire this time. We need the power right here and right now. And we got the fire for sure. Thank you so much for a very inspirational sermon and this conversation. And I'd like to also thank our viewing audience for joining us and participating uh, in this week's afterwards discussion with our presenter, uh, Cardinal Aswad. And we urge you to join us every week uh, as part of Vila Kuta, which you can find at on YouTube on Sunday mornings at 11.30 a.m. And until we meet again, we say peace, stay strong, and stay safe.